everyone. Welcome back to Ghostwood, the Twin Peaks podcast. I'm Charles Skaggs. With me, my partner, my lovely partner, Zan Sprouse. Hi, everybody. As we sit here and uh, get ready to walk, do another Twin Peaks commentary. It's a rainy night and the world sucks, so this is the best way I can think <laughs> of to spend an evening. But Twin Peaks does not suck. Never. Twin Peaks yeah. will never suck. And my husband is on his way home with pizza. So oh, there you go. So we got to hurry all, up and finish this for all, all is right with my world. All right. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah. For, for the, those obviously who don't live in Columbus and you're not listening to our, or watch us record this, it's raining cats and dogs and mass hysteria out there. And it's a per- <laughs> it's a perfect night for watching Twin Peaks. It's a perfect night for it. Yes. Because no, because even if it were yeah. dry outside, Oh, it's hotter than the devil's mistress out there. Oh, is it? Because I thought it cooled off with the cool, cool well, frame I moved in. It cool, yeah, to like eighty-two yeah. from like yeah. ninety-two. Yeah. So, and and now he, now here's Bob with sports. Right, exactly. All right, and so, so yeah, in 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 the Midwest, when it's hot, it's soupy. Yes. So you just might as well stay inside and watch Twin Peaks. Right. With yeah. us. Exactly. Now, now you could bring over donuts. That would be nice. We would or some pie. That. Or some pie. Yes. I want some pie. More people will come and they think we have a bunch of pie. <laughs> well, that's a different show. But uh, so, different. what are we going to talk about? Yeah. We're going to talk about uh, the third episode of Twin Peaks, aka the second episode after the pilot from season one, Zen or the skill to catch a killer, and uh, this is. Aired in April 19th, 1990, written by Mark Frost and David Lynch, directed by David Lynch. So right away, you know it's going to be awesome. And uh, we get the introduction of three players, major players in this. So we get and the go, – go ahead. Some, some amazing introductions too. Yes. Yes, they are. So obviously we're going to start off with the introduction of David Patrick Kelly as Jerry Horn. Oh, he's so gross. Followed by Miguel Ferrer as Yay! Albert Rosenfield, as he pronounces it in this. Later, Rosenfeld. Albert Rosenflower. Uh, Rosenflower. And yeah. the big one here, Michael J. Anderson as the little man from another place. Okay. Yes. This is uh, – yeah, Jerry Horn, like early 90s, late 80s, Jerry Horn is right. just so – Jerry Horn is – has been written by Mark Frost and David Lynch as the epitome of the douchiest of the douchey yes. for his era. Right. Now, and, now in the modern series of Twin Peaks, he's just basically a lovable old stoner. But he acts like he's some lovable old hippie when we know that he was this douchey 80s guy. Right. So he's totally a poser, which makes him back in the level of douchey again. Okay. You know, even though he's mellowed out, he's, I, he's totally a poser. Yeah, yeah. Well, we, he, uh, yeah, because obviously he spends most of the modern series totally baked. I think I'm high. Yeah, I think I'm high. Oh, I better do this. Oh, we haven't pulled this one out in a while. This is great. I think I'm high. <laughs> <laughs> Got to do that for Jerry. Oh, Jerry Horn. Yes, and he's, and again, props to David Patrick Kelly for being amazing at playing this character. Yep. He's really wonderful right. at this. So, and oh, just a quick footnote. Yeah. Guess who turned fourteen the day this episode aired? Who? That would be me. <gasps> really? April fourteenth, nineteen ninety, was my fourteenth birthday. Well, this is April nineteenth, nineteen ninety. This aired. That's what you said. April nineteenth, nineteen ninety. All right. Well, you just said April fourteenth. Did I say April fourteenth? That yes, was stupid. Yeah we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll go to the I, audio on that one, but I'm pretty sure you did. I apparently am Jerry Horn and think I might die (laughs) if I don't even know my own damn birthday. (laughs) Oh, it doesn't want to do it. I think I'm high! All right, there we go. Yes, no, April 19th, 1990 is my 14th birthday. All right. So So, I was getting my 14th birthday and the 19th mixed up. I must have just... Well, happy birthday. Happy birthday. You know what's weird is I'm trying to think of what I was doing on this day. Yep. And I have no idea. I would well, have been, it was a while ago. It was a while ago. I would have been in the eighth grade. Yeah. And I have 
it might have been the day that we all went to go see the Son of Heaven Columbus when it, it exhibit when it came to Columbus, but I yeah. don't think so. Okay. But anyway, as well, just, I would I would have been on the tail end of my junior year of college. Nice. It's at University of Central Florida in Orlando. So uh, good lord. So I probably swung by the donut shop to because I knew Twin Peaks was going to be on and heck yeah. Kicked back in my little college apartment and watched some Twin Peaks. I probably had some sort of pie. Pay. For my yeah. All right. So, All right. We, so let's. Uh, so for everybody that wants to kind of follow along at home, uh, we have just we are at the two minute twenty six second mark. If you're able to do that, also known as the spot. Uh, just after you see the words uh, directed by David Lynch. Just after you see them fade out. Yes, yes. So the so screen like, is clear screen of, is, of words. Right. So that's where we're at. So we, you should be seeing uh, the horns having a rather awkward dinner. Yes. As we're about to see. So uh, we'll, everybody get your finger play buttons ready. And we will start playing in three Two, one. All right. And here's oh, Jerry. Uncle Jerry. Uncle Jerry's here. He barges in from dinner and is telling people to bring his luggage into this room. Right. And he's rocking the shades oh. and he's got his fade haircut. Uh-huh. He has he has sandwiches in his luggage. Now he has come from Paris. Yeah. Yep. This is Paris to Washington State, and he has sandwiches. Well, I will give him this. He's, know, rock, he's rocking a bow tie, and bow ties are cool. Bow ties and suspenders, yes. So he's got sandwiches in his luggage, and he didn't know where they were. He's got like four of them. Four sandwiches, baguette, brie, and butter. And Benjamin Horn is in the middle of dinner with his family. A silent, awkward dinner. Right. But he's going to eat... Jerry's sandwiches instead. Yeah, he's right now he's just sniffing it. He's just smelling it and now he's eating it like chomp, a little kid would eat a taco. Like chomps down. Takes a big mouthful. Now I will say that brie, butter, yeah. and baguette sandwiches are in fact delicious. I'm sure you remember, yes. Charles, that that was what I made the night we watched the premiere of The Return. It was. It was. And you were you were quite excited by those, that brie and the butter sandwiches. I was. It was, it was really good. And yes, we have Jenny and Jenny down by the river. And, and they're talking with their mouths full. Right, right. Yes, their mouths are completely full. And uh, I um, – so often if I've ever had to say something with my mouth full, I always end it with, and Jenny and Jenny down by the river. <laughs> There was a van yeah. down by the river. <laughs> Sandwiches wrapped in wax paper. <laughs> and yeah. Always Benjamin, a pleasure. Always a pleasure, yes. Benjamin Horn. Terrible husband and father. Yep. As usual. Total, and total, of course, di still, total yeah. dick comment as he walks out from his family. Yep. So uh, Jerry takes uh, Benjamin takes Jerry outside and Gives him the rundown of what's going on that the uh, Norwegians left and Laura Palmer has murdered. And his first reaction is, well, did they sign the papers? He's so much more upset than the fact that, yep. that Laura was dead. And that's, again, a perfect depiction of how Jerry is just a total ass. Right. And then he, and then like as an afterthought, he's like, did you see Leland's daughter was yep. murdered? Well, now I'm depressed. And, I'm depressed. And you know he's more depressed about the Norwegians than he is about uh Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm sure Laura. he could not care less about Laura. Mm-hmm. But there's a new girl at One Eye Jacks that's gonna right. cheer you up. Oh. Ew. Right. You, brother Jerry, have a fifty fifty chance of being first in line. That is so gross. That is so gross. Uh, All work and no play makes Homer something something. Go crazy? And don't I just, mind, don't and mind this, if I do. Don't mind if I do. I would just like to state, for the record, on this recording, that Charles made 
that Simpsons reference. Yes, it, without I beat you any to, prompting from me. I beat the, so, beat you to the Simpsons reference on that one. Yes, I, I'm quite proud of that. Thank so, you. I I can only I aspire think, to be your level of Simpsons reference. Oh, I don't know if you should aspire to that, but I appreciate it. <laughs> what I think is weird about what I think is funny about this yeah. is that this episode especially reminds you that these brothers are named Ben and Jerry. Yes. So now you want ice cream. Hilarious. Yes, I want ice cream on my pie. That's what you know, so, that's one of the things we should have had at um, our Twin Peaks premiere party is Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Yeah, I had no idea that Ben and Jerry were going to be in that first episode. Right. So that would have been, yeah, that would have been good. Yeah. Oh, and now here we have the lovely 1950s budding romance that is James and Donna. And they had huckleberry pot. And just watch the screen sizzle. Oh, yes. It's, they're, they're pretty adorable. And it just, I think it just shows you again that it's, that his parents are, her parents are just really sweet. Right. Like, we're going to bed. Are you coming to church with us? And now we're going to juxtapose that with Ben and Jerry arriving at One Eye Jacks. Yeah. I, I, I didn't come here to lose my shirt. I just came to take it off. You're disgusting, Jerry. <laughs> but, oh, and, and so, look at these, look at these yeah. gaudy, gaudy outfits. And meanwhile, at the Twin Peaks cos- cosplay contest. Oh, my goodness gracious. Yeah, this, this. <laughs> It's lodged with the antlers and the right, and the you know the gaudy. Uh, and they're like the, the only lady. guys there. It's just, yeah. Just where the, is everybody? Is this like a Tuesday night at One Eye Jack? I don't know. It could be. Ugh. this is so gross. Yeah, he's. Uh. And the, and Jerry, the problem... Jerry's making fun of this one woman's intelligence. Mm-hmm. Seriously, and then, and then we here have we, the, have we have all the, of the yeah the bevy of beauties the. And Blackie walks through, mm-hmm. parting the Red Sea. And you gotta, you gotta wonder what. Uh... Who's the glad handing dandy? <laughs> and here's, here's Benjamin with uh, trying to be charming with his sonnets. Some right. of the most cliched sonnets that there are, by the way. Well, and then Jerry comes along and just completely kills that. Yeah, where's a new girl? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, okay. I'm, I'm ready to are. get laid now. I'm ready to have sex now with somebody who's maybe 18, maybe not. Right. Doesn't matter. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. As long yeah, as she's from the perfume care. counter. That's the problem with the perfume counter is that we, we do all coin, know. That... We do the coin flip, and Jerry loses the coin flip. Jerry loses the coin flip. He gets sloppy seconds. He, he lost the odds. Poor guy. But yeah, that's the thing. That's the whole thing about this place is that obviously, right? We 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 find out later that Benjamin Horn somehow ruined Blackie's life. Either got her hooked on heroin, like she tried to do to Audrey, or something. And that all of these. I mean, look at look at how look at the reservation in her eyes. Yeah. With this, she knows. I mean, it, she's she knows he's skeevy, but I, I don't even think that she knows he's skeevy. It's that she knows he's Benjamin Horn. Right. She knows that she, he owns this place. She knows that he owns her other job. Right. And you know, however, it was that Emery Battis talked her into coming to get this job is, you know, probably not the best idea. But he probably enticed her with. More money than she would probably ever think of seeing it being like 17. Right. From a small town. It's like if you want to get and, ahead in the world. Yeah, it's just it's just awful. This, yep. this whole thing is just so gross. And it's, the well, whole it's supposed pic- to be. It's supposed to be. It, it, it is. It is. It's just yep. this whole picking off, picking off teenagers from the perfume counter of your department store to come work in your whorehouse. Now just we have we, we go back to James and Donna who are essentially like looking into each other's eyes at close up. Going, you're prettier. No, you're prettier. No, you're prettier. Well, they're trying to get over their guilt of loving each other, right? In 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 spite of Laura, yeah. And that they and try to get over the guilt of being happy with each other, even though they feel that they should be sad because Laura is gone. And you know, Donna's saying because of Laura, I couldn't say anything. I couldn't even let myself think it. And they're 
talking about how there were times in school that they wanted to tell each other that they loved each other, but they just never could do it. And they're trying to... They have their first kiss. Yes, they have their first kiss. And she's saying, are we going to be together, James? And he, of course, can't really answer that. Right. Because, you know, he's he's going to have to get on his bike and ride and, you know, be part of a murder. What? I'm a loader, daddy. A rebel. Deja vu. <laughs> so, it, and, and I can understand how they feel, just feeling that there that you shouldn't be happy in this in this particular situation especially with Coop, each other cooper blowing into a duck call or something yes it is, yes exactly cooper's in his hotel room and he gets a call from hawk and uh talking about um Ron at pulaski yes and we this is where we find that she also worked at the perfume counter there may be a connection and, mm-hmm, and that there was a one-armed man in intensive care. And yep. so, you know, Cooper's getting the, the skinny of what happened when Hawk tried to pursue the one-armed man. Yeah. He, yeah. he lost him in the morgue, basically. He ditched me. Yeah. He ditched me with those speedy legs of his, with those cat like reflexes. <laughs> exactly. Oh, ninja, and here we have Cooper. He's a ninja. Yep. He gets a secret note yep. under his door. Right. The plot thickens. He like sniffs the note, and opens it up. Mm-hmm. He hey. looks down the hall to see if yep. anybody's there. Jack with one eye. It's like, oh, what hey, that ten percent off at Barnes and Noble. Awesome. No. Excellent. I'll take this. Maybe somebody else will knock on my door with a gift card. But. uh Oh, now we're up to no good. Yep. So we Mike got Mike and Bobby. Mike and Bobby. They're out in the woods in Bobby's car. And Bobby's, Bobby's got, got a sw- knife. Got his switchblade. The leather jacket is badass car and his switchblade. Yep. He's a rebel and he'll never ever be any good. Nice. Until twenty five years later and he becomes a cop. It totally sells out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So even though he's not a cop like that jerk yeah. Chad is. So we get our first yeah. like well, real um David Lynch using a flashlight in the woods. Mhm. It the, that flashlight that which, looks like which a boob. makes everything look so creepy because it's shot from point of view. Right. It's shot from point of view and it's everything is dark and all you can see dark. is what the the flashlight the immediate flashlight. Everything else is dark. Everything else is dark. And so, so you don't you know, know what's, like, have... what's like in the distance. You have no idea. <gasps> and what's hiding in the distance? Leo. Leo Johnson. Get me a beer. Get me a beer. Leo. This is Leo and uh, uh, Bobby trying to do their cocaine deal. But of course, the $10,000 that he needs to give to Leo is still in Laura's safety deposit box. Don't. So they have no idea how they're going to get out of this. And there's somebody else lurking behind the trees. Yes. A mysterious... We're not sure who that is yet. A mysterious person in a black trench coat. Yep. Just there freaking everybody out. It's just a random flasher. Yeah, just a random flasher that shouts out in the middle of the woods waiting for kids who are burying necklaces. So and they're I love, in a, I, love uh, the, I love the creepy music when we see that guy, that mysterious figure, that mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's awesome. So they're in a little bit of a standoff, you know, where's the rest of the cocaine? Well, where's the rest of the money? And can you I mean, when I was in high school, <laughs> yeah. Leo needs a new pair of shoes. Right. One of my my favorite Leo lines. That's a good one. Um when I was in high school, Ten thousand dollars might have been, might as well have been one billion dollars. I mean, that I can't even imagine being in high school and yeah. having access to ten thousand dollars. Exactly. Like I was lucky <laughs> enough to get five bucks. <laughs> Seriously, it's like I mean, you know, getting like fifteen dollars to buy a new right. record. Yeah, like was, if I had like allowance amazing. or whatever, I'm just like getting by from allowance to allowance. That's the thing. I didn't sell cocaine and I wasn't a hooker, so all I could do was babysit. Do you know how much babysitting you would have to do for $10,000? Right. Seriously. 
Oh, and now here we have the reveal that Leo yep. suspects Bobby of running around with, with he Shelly. Like, he knows that Shelly's cheating on him, but he doesn't know who yet. Stepping out in your own damn bedroom. Yep. And, you know, Bobby's – and, you know, Dana Ashbrook's doing a pretty good job here of trying to act scared out of his mind. Yep. And and also like, oh, dude, that's got to suck, man. You're old lady. <laughs> Yeah, that's 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 that's, terrible. The, that's uh horrible. Yeah, that's the worst. Mhm. Oh yeah, that's yep. yeah, don't you know, we'll, we'll get Le- your money for I, you. Let's talk about the money again. I don't want to talk about your lady anymore. I like Leo trying to be all intimidating with the flashlight. Like he points it right at Mike's face and then he's like holds it up to his own to kind of make him look spooky like he's at a campfire. Yeah, he's doing like the ghost story yes. flashlight under your Oh, he- and Leo has a shotgun too. Yep. So Run, yeah, Forrest, this, run. Yeah, these two dumbass kids are in way so over like, their head. They're booking all the way out to the car. And then mm-hmm. you, got, you see the flashlight shaking all around. Da, 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 da. Yeah, you see them trying to run away as far as fast as they possibly can back to the car. And, and then, then oh, the football lands on their hood. The football lands on their hood. Yes. It's the half-deflated Tom Brady football. Right. <laughs> That. They just drive off with it. <laughs> the original Deflate Gate. The original Deflate Gate. Yes, it's not deflated. It just has cocaine in it. Yeah. No, no problem, really. Nope. Oh, and here's Ed. Uh-oh. After he gets a little excited with the Hershey's chocolate syrup, Ed is about to make an inadvertent major leap in the invention of the silent drapery runner. Oh, look at Nadine with all of her little porcelain figures. Nick, Nick. She, you know she has Hummel figures. <gasps> no! Oh, then he steps all over the cotton balls and the drapes and drips cot- grease all over her cotton balls. He, he stepped on one of the drape runners and he dropped um, yeah. dripped oil on it as well. Yep. And uh, she's really angry at him. And you this would, is You would think he would have had a wash-up <laughs> sink outside. You would, th- you would think so, but uh, how else would that plot right, advance? Right, exactly. Yeah, and, and, and Nadine's working out in a leotard and her like '80s rowing machine. Her and her '80s rowing machine, exactly. And we're sort of getting we're about. Yes, so, we're about to get a glimpse as to what's going to happen to her when she gets her superhuman strength. Right, because she's basically like it's that adrenaline she gets from being like she basically becomes the Hulk. Like you know, like you yes, know, Mr. Hurley, don't make me angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. Right. You wouldn't, you wouldn't, Mr. Hurley, don't break my drape oh, runners. Here's, here's one of a couple of my favorite line ever coming up. Oh, excellent. Yes, yes, yes. So yes, Nadine, you see how furious Nadine gets at, uh, at Ed. Yep. And, and Ed's like, oh, I'm, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't see it there. She's like, you make me sick. And, oh, invitation to love. Yeah. This is our first invitation to love. Although we just get a little tease of it. And we see the only fo- photo of Leo Johnson on the TV, mm-hmm. which surprise, it looks like a mugshot. <laughs> and it just it, it it almost seems like he put it on the TV. Yeah, because he's all to frowny. Say, like, Shelly, Shelly, I'm watching you all the time. Right, like the eyes. Yes, doing the eye yeah. thing. And so he's you know he's come now now no. she's she's just home watching soap operas. Invitation yeah. to Love, of course, being the. Uh, yeah. Soap opera within a soap opera. Well, presumably she's hiding out because her face is all bruised up when because Leo socked her with the sock. Whacked her with a bar of soap inside of a sock. Which is total dick move. Total dick move. And so, she, and, so and of course Bobby, Bobby, notice, Bobby notices and he's like, what happened? And, you know, I'll say, I'll say this for Bobby. Bobby's kind of an ass, but. He cares about Shelly, I think. Oh, he absolutely cares about Shelly, and there's no way he would rough her up like this. No, that, and that's to his credit. That he's that not, is definitely he's, to his he, credit. As much of a jerk as he is, mm-hmm. you know, he he at least treats her well, better than he Leo. Does. Yes, and they obviously, you know, we know now that they get they eventually get married after yep. Leo thankfully dies. Yep. And, it, you know, it's weird when, when we say things like, oh, yep. wow, to his credit, he doesn't rough women up. Like, we see them kiss that's and... Like, wait, She's That's going, like what you're supposed to do. Yep. She's going like, supposed- ow, 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 my jaw, ow. <laughs> you're supposed to not rough women up. You shouldn't be given credit for doing something you're supposed to do like Exactly. That. I agree. But, you know, in this, oh. Big Ed. Oh. Here, 
This the is o- just the, the the love that can't be montage here in Twin yep. Peaks. The only it's romance a- that worked out. The only romance that is like even remotely well, it's not even it's it's not that healthy, but it's yeah. definitely the one you rooted for the most. And Big Ed putting the F in flannel here. It's not the first time, but it won't be the last time. But I'm in that doghouse again. Yeah. <laughs> That's like Ed's country song. I'm in that doghouse again by Ed Hurley. I would I would love to hear that. That would be. I, Does it, I, would I, that, doesn't that make a great country like classic country song title? Seriously, Everett McGill needs to get. I on was this. in that doghouse dog house. again. Yeah. Oh, wasn't my first time. It won't be my oh, last time. Anyone for a warm up? You bet. You bet. And here's the line. Donuts. Yes. Damn good coffee. And hot. Excellent. So we're so, out in so, the woods. So would, would, that, would that make a great blog title? Just saying. I think I think somebody should. I'd read it. I'd subscribe to that. I think it would. Uh, totally. So we're out in the woods. Yeah. And we have a list of, but you know, <laughs> even love, though we're I out love, in the woods, I love Cooper's pointer here. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt, uh-huh. but I just, no, I no, love, it's okay. It's like he's teaching class. He's like, okay, all right, class, we're gonna teach today. I'm gonna teach you about the reproductive system. <laughs> today we're gonna learn about Tibet. <laughs> Everybody leans forward. Everybody it's leans synchron- forward. Synchronized. <laughs> Seriously, so we're out in the woods, but we have a table full of donuts and a large chalkboard that on one side of it has a map of Tibet right. taped to it. And then folding chairs where the entire police force of Twin Peaks is being right. taught about Tibet and the Dalai Lama, Cooper's personal hero. And following a Brandon, dream, it's a good hero, have, but it is, it is. And, and that, After, this is, you know, this is my first real exposure to the, uh, the whole subject of the Dalai Lama in Tibet when I was, Back in me the 90s. Too. So this is, this is what kind of got me like, okay, this this person's kind of interesting, and I wanted to learn more about the Dalai Lama. Absolutely, me too. So and I did. So and credit to Twin that, Peaks for, uh, for instilling that. Thank you for the history lesson, Twin Peaks. Yep. So we have he, – he had a dream about three years ago that gave him this idea for this process. Technique. That, technique. That, Yes, yeah. this technique he's about to uh, circles the J. Teach to everybody so because we're nervous about meeting J, but we also have an R and a T, yeah. and we have a list of suspects. And so now we're going to do the uh, we're going to throw the rocks at a bottle. If I throw this rock at the window and it breaks, Leo is innocent. <laughs> Leo, you're free to go. <laughs> right. So again, here we're seeing a lot of the the the, the where the parody sketch on SNL right, drew from the, yeah the fodder that they, they used for the parody sketch. Right. So, you know, everybody has their part in this, you know, um, Hawk's going to hold the rocks with, and with, Lucy's going to say Nate's out loud. You know, he's wearing kitchen mitts to hold those rocks. Yeah. And I'm not a hundred percent sure what that's all about. I don't either. Like he has to I'm, keep him from like getting his vibes all over the rocks. I don't get it. It might be that, or it could just be that that bucket is really heavy. Could be, but, and it's just making indentations. All right. I don't, I don't think so, Rock, Hawk's the kind of guy that would kind of be bothered by that, though. That's true. He's All a right, tough so guy. He can he can handle it. James is off base, but yeah. Josie hits the log. Yeah, but that that's the it. Bottle's on. The bottle wobbles. Bottle wobbles. So she's a little closer than James right. is. Right. Lawrence Jacoby. What do we got? What do we got for Doctor Jacoby? Come on, Snake Eyes. <laughs> Oh, he knocks the bottle over, but it doesn't break. And so what does that but, mean? But didn't break. That's very important that it didn't break. Yep. So we're gonna try we're gonna try again. We're gonna use the same bottle. Poor Andy. He's over there. And you know Andy's getting just, you know, yeah. racked with rocks over Johnny there. Johnny Horn. Johnny Horn. Nowhere Complete. near. No, hits a barrel that's off to the distance. Seriously, off Johnny to the Horn side. is yeah, Johnny Horn has absolutely nothing to do with this. And uh, Norma Jennings. Yep. What do we got? Uh, close, but not yeah. really. It's like she's close to Laura, but she's yeah. not close to knowing anything about Laura. Shelly Johnson. So bounces, out of the way. And bounces off the tree in the head. 
Yeah, so guess, who, <laughs> guess who's about to file an OSHA violation claim? It didn't hurt. He wants he wants everybody to know it doesn't hurt him. Yep. And now he's basically got a head injury because he's just <laughs> laughing and trying not to pass out. But he's not bleeding. No, he's he's fine. He's and got a, hard uh, head. got a hard head. Yeah. And Harry is a little bit skeptical of this process. Like, this came from a dream and you just hit one of my deputies in the head. Is this going to go somewhere? <laughs> like, and Cooper's just like, yes. Yes, it did. Yeah. Came from a dream. Can you believe that? So, yeah, he's a little, he's a little bit impatient. I love Lucy with her obvious. There's no eye in Jack. <laughs> yep. And it, 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 how does it take these cops this long? Right. To figure out one eye jacks. Yeah. Maybe maybe it's uh maybe it's Nadine Hurley. No, it's it's one eye jacks, you guys. Well oh my apparently God. this is like their first murder mystery ever in Twin Peaks. <laughs> yep. Yeah. And it probably is, frankly. I mean Yeah. I mean we read the uh the um They have this they have this big debate over like, well, okay, one eye jacks is a place, so take it off the board. Yeah, take it off the list. All right, now how? Leo Johnson. Leo Johnson. Connection to Laura, unknown. So what's going to happen Here's here? the wind-up and the pitch. And, oh, It's a strike mo. right over the plate. Breaks the bottle. Breaks the bottle. Yeah. One hit. You know, you could have recycled so. that. Now there's just glass in the woods. Some yeah. little woodland yeah. creature is going to walk on that and right. get cut and get an infection, and it's going to be your fault, Cooper. So again, and I said this when we talked about the parody, yep. they're really, really setting this up for Leo to be the killer. Well, at this point, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's he's you know you he's know, obviously the number you know suspect number one, big time. Not even anywhere near Leland. Right. He's 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 total red herring, and he's totally just to throw somebody off of the. Right. Off of the scent. Oh, here's Audrey so, playing her one and only song. Oh, Audrey's Dance. Yep. The best the best song. Yep. The best piece of music from the soundtrack. It's so and dreamy. It's so dreamy. And of course we have, you know, this this stark dichotomy of Audrey here by herself yep. looking at Well Donna's Donna, with her parents. With her parents. Right. But that just also makes you ask, where are the horns other or where are the Hayward's other two kids? Oh yeah, yeah, Gersten and um, Harriet. Uh, Harriet, thank you. Yeah. So Audrey gets coffee because hey, Agent Cooper takes his coffee. Agent Cooper he likes, likes yes, coffee. Like, he loves coffee. coffee. He loves coffee. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, she keeps looking over. Donna's gonna Don- like. I guess I should say hi. <laughs> And is, is she looking over at Donna wondering why she doesn't have more friends? Or is she looking over at Donna's family saying, why don't I have a nicer family? Either way, it just makes you sad for Audrey. Right. And, and it kind of makes her, well, more sympathetic, too, of a character. Oh, Audrey's extremely sympathetic. And you can you can see why she's so sad and so and lashes out so bad. And, and we find out that... Uh, you know, you know, Donna never realized that Audrey even thought anything of Laura, but then right. Audrey tells her about how she worked with Johnny and that's how they have that connection is through, is through Johnny. Um, and then we have a little bit of, uh, Audrey's kind of like tracing the rim of her coffee. Like she's about to like make musical notes from it. You know, that kind of, yeah, she's going to do that, that, that glass thing. But we have a little bit of a girl talk about agent Cooper, like, Oh, he's so cute! But oh, Audrey, he's an adult. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, interesting side note. This is pretty much exactly where I sat when I went to this when I went to this diner. Oh, yes, right you, in, you were actually there. I was actually there, actually drinking black coffee. So jealous! So jealous! And um, didn't you say the coffee wasn't that great? Um, to me, coffee is not that. Okay, coffee's not- coffee. Yeah. The, the pie is nothing, nothing spectacular, but it's still pie. Okay. So I mean, it's not the world's greatest pie, but it's still, it's it was still pretty good. I mean, it's still pie. I mean, how bad can pie possibly be? Uh, now they're talking about um, Audrey's father. Oh, geez. He, that he used to sing to her, you know, like show tunes or something. Mm-hmm. And just how she. 
how he treated Laura, even though he, it's a creepy relationship, even Isn't though he was too dreamy. But he treated her, he sort of treated yeah. Laura more like a daughter than he's ever treated Audrey. Yep. Yeah. And now I shall <laughs> perform the only dance I know, swaying. But she's so obviously in her own world. Right. You know, who goes into a diner like at 11 o'clock on a Sunday morning? Right, after church. After church, it puts the jukebox on and starts dancing. Yep, by herself. And Donna's like, I really don't know what to do with this right now. Yeah, so now it's like, well, is she trying to turn me on here? What's going on? I don't get... She's like, so are we done talking? Or <laughs> Yeah, that conversation just quickly fizzled. And Audrey's like, okay, I'm just going to go off and do this now. Yep. Here's to Here's to Billy. <laughs> here's to ben oh wait that's somebody else that's somebody else and oh bloody yeah. rag we're yeah. back in the uh yeah we're b- so here's yes. albert <laughs> yes and things get considerably more interesting oh as we see the debut of miguel ferrer as albert rosenfeld oh yes and here's we have lucy reading an old uh, library book on tibet yes uh, which I thought was a nice touch. I love that touch. And and Lucy's trying to <laughs> announce that that um, Albert's here. He and his he has absolutely no patience for anything. No. Immediately. For <laughs> yep. whatever asshole she sticks his tongue her tongue out at him. I love that little like look she gives him and sticks her tongue out at him. Yeah. It so it was good. But he, and now we're getting the the warning that he's a, he's a forensic genius, but. But he's, he's kind of a dick. <laughs> he's pretty much a dick, yes. Yeah. And Harry has no idea what to expect. He's like, no. oh, well, nobody's perfect. It's like, well, Dude. Cooper Cooper did try to warn him, Fair, you know, to be yes. fair. Yeah. Yeah, and he's, he's all dismissive, like, welcome to Amateur Hour. Welcome to Amateur Hour. I have seen some yeah. backwater burgers, but this place <laughs> makes the cake. And he's just, yeah, he's just nothing but insulting. Right. And, uh... He and Harry are just not going to get along no. right from the get go. Well, and, uh, well, he just Albert comes in and disrespects him in the station. The station, the police force, uh, the town. Lucy, welcome to amateur hour. Yeah, <laughs> and Co- Cooper's just kind of like smiling, like, "Isn't this great?" <laughs> like, oh, Albert's here. And C- uh, come here, yeah, Spark- and, come here, Sparky. And now he's insulting Doc Hayward's work. Yep. So, and he's, uh, Harry pulls him aside and tries to say, you know what? I know you're good at what you do, but you're in my house now. So uh, you I'll, better. I'll bounce your ass up and down the street. Yeah. You better. <laughs> you better act right, sir. And Lucy's like, ha, good. Yeah. You tell him, Sheriff you, Truman. Cooper gives the thumbs up. Yeah, seriously. Like everything's going to be just fine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Me. Yes, you've created conflict. Thank you, Cooper. <laughs> yeah, Albert's gonna Albert's gonna get punched in the face, but you know, yeah, it's all gonna be. Oh, poor Ed! Look at how Ed like <sighs> walks into his house like half scared. And then, <laughs> Ed. So yeah, hashtag Ed two. Here we go, and then oh my goodness, just jumps right into him. And yeah, Nadine is a little bit of an inconsistent person. Yeah, slightly. So, uh, hello, Miss Manic Depressive. No. Right. She's so furious at him earlier that she can bend a rowing machine backwards. Right. But now she's so happy that he oiled her cotton balls, which sounds like innuendo, but it's not. He literally <laughs> oiled her cotton balls. Hey, now. And so now we have, oh my God, she has one of those giant forks and spoons on the wall. Right. I haven't seen one of those in years. Look at that. Silent drape runners. They're completely silent because they're all greased up. And she is the happiest woman on the planet now. She's so excited. All she as Nadine, as Nadine not Nadine, as Norma said, yeah. I saw her in town and that's all she could talk about were those drape runners. <laughs> we're gonna and be so rich. We're like, gonna be so rich. We can finally afford that golden shovel we've been wanting. Yeah, the golden shovel. I could start my own drapery store. Oh, and here we have like total passive aggressiveness between Pete and Catherine. Oh, yes. Where Pete is like using mink oil on his boots on her bed. On her, yes, the uh, 
Her satin sheets. Yes, on her bed, and we're about to we're about to find out here in a few minutes that this is not their room. This is her room, right? Because so. of course they sleep separately. Well, because that's she, just, she's because a charmer. She's, she's so much more above him, right? In her mind, and uh, so Pete sneaks a key to Josie. Right, Josie is uh, thinking something fishy is going on. You know, so sorry she wants to check out the ledger. Sorry for the pun. She thinks yeah. there's something fishy going on with a ledger. And as we both know, as we saw last last episode, that there are two separate ledgers that really? Catherine is keeping and is in cahoots with Ben. Go to your room. Go to your room. Get your boots off my bed. Well, I don't want to get mink oil on my bed. Hashtag Pete two. <laughs> So, um, so hashtag Ed two and hashtag P two P two. So we're, so yes, Catherine is in cahoots with Ben for the insurance money and then the land sale because the sawmill's not doing well. She doesn't give a rat's ass about the fact that it's going to put most of this entire town out of work. If she does that. Right. Now, Josie, that Josie thing. goes to the safe and she pulls out these two ledgers under presumably a what? A signed copy of twilight. <laughs> I think there's and isn't this adorable too? Yeah. Ledgers, right? Like <laughs> how qu- how quaint. When was the last time you saw a ledger for like a multi million dollar business like this? For those who don't know what a ledger is, think of it like an Excel spreadsheet, uh, hard on a copy, hard copy, and bound. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, the creepy Palmer house. Oh, dance with me. Yes. <laughs> So oh, Le- Leland obviously was into vinyl before it was cool. Now I am. Uh, Is he a vinyl snob? He's he's quite the vinyl snob because that's a seventy eight yeah. player yeah. right there. And he's playing like Pennsylvania six five thousand. I was I was going to ask you if that's what this was. That's what it uh, is. Because I I'm watching this with just captions and not yeah. audio. Yeah, he's doing pass- yeah Pennsylvania six five thousand. So it's like you know <laughs> coming up next on America's top nineteen forty. Yeah, exactly. On the Glenn Miller, Ara. Yes. Pennsylvania six five thousand. Twenty three skadoo. And now, um, now, yeah, this, now is this is the, where where you picture Phil Hartman spinning around. Yes, this is this is exactly where they got all of this stuff. Was yeah, this episode was obviously a major influence for that sketch. Mm-hmm. And so yeah, so he's like spinning around like he's uh you know like um. Oh, what's that? What's that song? Uh, yeah, you spin me right round, baby, right round. Well, and who, who is this? I wonder. Oh, the 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 singing Pennsylvania six five thousand. Oh no 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 oh. no who who is who is Leland right now? Is he Leland or oh. is he Bob? <sighs> That's a good question. Maybe there's conflict going on inside him. There is no conflict. There is no conflict. There is only Zool. <laughs> And then I see now. I think this part with the broken photo. Oh yeah, yeah. This is actually I, Ray Ray Wise's real blood. He actually cut himself here. Oh my good lord! I had never heard that before. Yeah, really? yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I, I remember a trivia bit. Oh my gosh! Apparently, like he cut his hand on whatever glass they were using, or plastic, or whatever, and he just decided like improv. He improved smearing the blood over Laura's face, and Lynch kept it. Nice. Now, see, the thing I wonder about is, like, sometimes I wonder if looking at this, when he first starts looking at the photo, he's Leland. Right. But I, I so often I think when he's frowning, yeah, he's Bob. So I don't, I don't quite know. And is it? I, I kind of wonder if Ray knows at this point whether if he knows that Bob is, he's supposed to be possessed. I'm sure he does. I'm sure David Lynch oh. told him from a performance standpoint right. that he needs to know. But and I, I wonder if it's and here we Leland. Have dream. Yep, we have Leland going crazy, or if we have Bob trying to be depressed and yep. sad. So therefore, it looks. So this is this is the moment that Twin Peaks changed the game. Yes, and elevated everything to a brand new level. And this is this is where we have everybody raise saying, the bar. Yes. Whoa, whoa, that was scary. Yeah, flash of Bob. Look out. Flash of Bob. Flash of Bob. So like so, strobe light. 
Whoa, Strobit. <laughs> so when everybody says that, wow, that show is weird, this is what started that. Yes, yes. This this is what made Twin Peaks a water cooler show. Yes. Fire. Walk Come with, with me. me. That would be a great intro to a podcast. That would be fantastic. Yep. Now this now this scene right here that we're seeing with Mike the one armed man. Right. This was in the European movie. Yeah, this is the ending from the European version of the Twin right. Peaks pilot. Because they had a they were contractually obligated to create an ending. Right. So if you watched if you were like me But tw- Lynch loved the footage. He did, yeah, it was great. And he, if you were like me and you could only go back and watch this on home video, this was the only thing that was available in the United States even for a long time was right. this pilot movie. Yeah. Um, then they eventually um, put out the, the box set of the DVDs and then you actually got to see the first episode, the pilot with the um, uh, Here, necklace. Speech. And here's That's where up. we first to get to hear Bob speak. Right. And – if you watch this and then you see the, the episode and you see this episode, you think, oh, this is a memory. Right. And then when you see the next episode, you're like, what are you talking about? You don't know. <laughs> I promise. Thought, this, this actually happened. I will kill again. I will kill again. Tell me when he's gone. <laughs> yeah, I will. Hey, you know, you know, say what you will, but he, he obviously makes good on his campaign promises. He sure does. So, and, you know, I'll give this, I'll give this to Cooper as well. Right. He's much less wrinkly and much less gray right. in real life. Well, here, yeah. here's what I think is just so funny is that like um, Kyle McLaughlin 25 years later looks a hell of a lot better than Dell Cooper 25 years later. This is very true. Right. Uh, and I'm not wrong uh, in that, am I? No, definitely not. I mean, he's got he's got a lot of spirit gum going on here. <laughs> right. Let's rock. Let's rock. Oh, this is great. The captions say in distorted English. What? There you go. <laughs> oh, and once again, if they I can only... They talk, say it in, distor- in distorted voice. It says in distorted English. It's really that funny. Is, that is funny. Well, how are you going to describe that? <laughs> That's very true. Oh, and here's, I, here's Laura pointing <laughs> to her nose like, I am your nose. <laughs> I am not your nose. What's oh, floating it, back there? It's like, is that, is that Hawkman? <laughs> yeah, what is that back there? It's like a kite. Like an owl? <gasps> Maybe. Maybe an owl. Oh, you know what? There's this gum that I used to really like. Right. right. I wonder what happened. Oh, yay! It's going to come back in style. <laughs> yeah. Bad news, though. It's broccoli flavored. Bad news. It's not as good as you remember it. Yeah, yep. Um, Never is. That's the thing. I was trying to think about it. Was you know, would I ever get excited about gum? Yeah. We you never know? got really an explanation for the gum, did we? We never get an at least as far as I know, we never get an yeah. explanation for the gum. And so does she we look have... almost exactly like Laura Palmer? But she is Laura Palmer. Are you and... Laura Palmer? We have some foreshadowing here that we are soon yeah. going to see a cousin that looks almost exactly like Laura Palmer. Right. This is Maddie foreshadowing. Yep. No, I'm actually Carrie Page. <laughs> and we have the sometimes my arms bend back, which yep. unfortunately happened to Laura mm. the night she died. That was very tragic to find. She's filled with secrets. Also, jello pudding. <laughs> Yeah, that was tragic to find out that that had actually happened to her. That that wasn't some sort of yeah. Oh, and here we have here we have uh, uh, Waldo the Minor Bird. Yep, where were the foreshadowing? Yep, there's always music in the air. Music in the air. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. We're no strangers to love. <laughs> yeah, and I, I I say it I say it every time I see these. If I could find these chairs, I'd be so happy. <sighs> I would love totally. to just have a room. If you find like these chairs, house. tell me because I want to buy them too. Oh my god! Yeah, or, we, or the lampstands, or you know something. There's going to be like a major uh, argument as to who gets these chairs when we find them. There better be like eight of them. I need to build a red room. I want a red room so bad. Seriously, just a little one. It doesn't have to be big, but just no, enough, I, just enough to walk and sit around in. in ch- I want to do this. 
I want to do this floor pattern yeah. in my Pez room. The chevron pattern, yeah. The chevron pattern, yeah. And it's not – there's a way you can do it with black and white yeah. tiles. It just takes a lot of planning and math that I've, so, I'm too lazy so to do. So Laura slash Maddie slash Carrie Page walks over and bends down. And Looks like she's – Lays one gently on Cooper. Right, right. Very, very sexy scene. You're not you're not sure what she's gonna do. It like it looks like she's gonna kiss him, and then it looks like. So is this considered like necrophilia? Ugh. No, because it's the lodge. Okay. Because it's not doesn't like count, it's doesn't, really... doesn't count. There's no body. No, and it's not like it's really Cooper. It's not like it's really Laura. That's true. It's, it's just a dream. Yeah. Okay. So we have Laura whispering so, something in Cooper's ear. Be sure to drink your oval teen. Oval and Cooper teen. Wakes up, Cooper wakes up with tin tin hair, going son of a bitch. <laughs> tin tin hair, awesome. Yes. This is like the worst be- case of bedhead ever. I know. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> it's just this little shark. It just kind of, of points hair. up, you know, like he's the Frisch's big boy. <laughs> well, and I want to say, I want to, I want to say to Harry, no, it can't wait until morning. All right. Now here, here's where comic Lachlan is the whitest person on earth because he can't keep the beat to that <laughs> jazz music. He's off rhythm. He, he just woke up. <laughs> But he's oh, like, this is the worst. Can I keep a when beat to save his life? And the when end. No, when these, I, I, I forget sometimes, you know, because now in my brain, yep. Twin Peaks is just one long thing. Right. But I forget how horrible it was to have to, like, wait an entire week yep. to figure out what the hell yep. happened. Oh, and, the, and a cool bit here, we get, instead of seeing Laura Palmer's homecoming queen photo, we actually get more footage of uh, the little man from another place dancing. So. Yes. We yeah. just get to see him yes. throughout the uh, throughout the end credits. This is the um, time on Spockets when we dance. When we dance. Yes. Yes, the man from another place doing his doing Michael his little Jay dance. Anderson getting his groove on. Yep. Lynch Frost Productions. The end. You know what I would like to what I would like to know, and yeah. I hope this is the case. Did he keep that suit? What would hope? If I, if I were him, I would have kept that suit. Like crazy that's, cake. That's got to be worth some serious coin. Seriously, I mean, like, what's that's, icon- that's they- iconic? What else are you gonna do with it? Or, yeah, what? What, I, I don't, I don't know if I want to see the, the the production that would use that suit again. It's like, right. what sort of bad seventies, you know, porn documentary? Yeah, right, would use that suit. <laughs> it's like, it's kind of like you know this red leisure suit. What do you? Yeah, yeah it's like Twin Peaks or like a bad seventies action yep. movie. You know, like a bad episode of Wonder Woman or something. Right. right. That'd be funny. So, but yeah, I can't, I can't understand why Harry doesn't say, no, Cooper, it can't wait until morning. I'm coming to your room Look, right now. Uh, you would, yes, you would think of me like, okay, you know who Laura killed Laura Palmer? Tell me, mother effer. Yeah, this is our first murder <laughs> this is our in like job. ever. Yeah. <laughs> let's, you know, so, let's close this case already. Jeez. This town hasn't had a murder in God knows when, and I'm the sheriff now, and right. there's no way... In hell, I'm going to let you sit on this all night long. <laughs> right. I'm not going to have like all these residents like voting me out of office because you just want to wait till morning. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> right? No, Cooper, we're doing this now. We're doing this thing now. I have constituents. I don't know why you think. Wait. <laughs> yeah. And that's that's the thing too, and it's and it and it's this also is more fodder for the whole. Um. Cooper doesn't actually want to leave Twin Peaks. Right, right. So he's like, no, this, he, is, this can wait until morning. It's he no go, big deal. He, he goes through all the uh, everything he can just to kind of like prolong this, push this off. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's great. You said you knew who killed the Republican. Yeah, I did, but I forgot. But it, sh- <laughs> but it shows you how observant um, SNL was when they did that parody sketch. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because they zeroed right in on the like iconic moments. It, absolutely. And used those. Saturday Night Live does some good work. Yeah, this is this is you know obviously we and we've we talked about this during our review of that parody sketch. Um, they just nailed it completely. Mm-hmm. They did, and everybody did such a great performance. Yeah. And they didn't need because you said this was April, right? And when did Twin Peaks take its summer hiatus? I wonder. Uh, well, it was only on for what eight episodes. Yeah. So I'm presuming since we're at episode three. So probably sometime in late May. That's what I'm wondering. So there weren't a lot of episodes for them to. No, there's only eight. The pilot and then 
the seven episodes after that. Yeah, there wasn't a lot for them to pull from. Nope. So this was episode three. Basically nine, hour, nine hours of television. Yeah. By the time that episode... Yeah, the first eight had aired by the time that that Saturday Night Live... Right. Sketch had, aired. Yeah, because uh, Saturday Night Live, it was the season premiere. It was in September. Right. So there wasn't right. any um, new episodes by then, I don't think. Nope. So there were... Um, there were uh, not many. There wasn't a lot to pull from. So but they really did. And I don't know if they knew at the time how, and, I, and I'm sure that they did know at the time, you know, I, I, and I, I've wondered this. Yeah. How, what sort of disclosure stuff that Saturday Night Live had to sign. Oh, maybe. For, in order to do this kind of a parody. Um. Well, because, yeah, you don't want David Lynch calling you up. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, wow. Well, I'm what? looking I'm looking at, a, at an episode episode guide and looking at uh, directors and things, and there are people I didn't quite realize had directed these episodes. Oh, so. okay. We'll talk about those when they when they come on. Yep, we got stuff to look forward to. Cause, Sheriff, we got a lot to talk about. Yeah, because, uh, yeah, so... Um, all right, so what was your uh, rating for this episode? I'm going to give this one a nine. Really? Um, okay. Yeah this this is a this is I'm going I'm giving this nine um, grease soaked cotton balls. Okay. Uh, because of the fact that we do get the introduction to the lodge, the man from another place. Right. Um, Twin Peaks really starts to become Twin Peaks at this point. Yes. And. And again, this ends on a major cliffhanger. I'm totally suspense. It's like, I want to watch the next episode right now. Yeah. I, I've, I've seen it a million times. I know what happened. Right. But I'm just really wanting to watch the next episode right now. <laughs> We're going to have to like binge, binge our recording sessions and just do like the whole like eight episodes of stretch or something. But, uh, Seriously, we should just have like a big slumber like a big, party. Like one big Sunday afternoon and just go right through <laughs> the whole thing. Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> like starting on a you know like we'll be so exhausted but. let's take monday off and then like saturday <laughs> friday night you'll come over and we'll just watch tv like the entire uh, weekend that would be awesome i would, to- would, I would so totally amazing. be up for that so amazing uh, especially when twin peaks is involved and, I, and I, i'm actually enjoying this because i'm approaching this because of doing the commentaries with you i'm totally approaching this from a, a fresh perspective yeah after watching these episodes at least i want to say at least eight times if not more yeah, at least it yeah seriously and i'm i'm trying to do that as well and trying to look for things in the background i've never noticed or right. trying to think about aspects of the characters i've never noticed before yeah because you so, you, you know some years have passed you kind of look at things in a different perspective or you, right. or you notice certain things you didn't notice before like you said so uh okay. so i give this one uh 10 out of 10 this should be pretty obvious Damn good cups of coffee and hot. And hot. Excellent. Because this is, to me, the definitive Twin Peaks episode. It yeah, has that, yes. everything. Yes. And, you know, like, the most of the major players are now introduced. Um, just, you know, this this was the episode, like you said, it it, it changed the, the, it flipped the script and mm-hmm. um, ends on a great cliffhanger and a frustrating cliffhanger because you're like, oh, oh yeah. I want to know what he says. And uh, I remember that that frustration, like, oh, I got to wait a week for this. You're killing me. But, um, yeah, it was, just, it was just so different. And it's just so innovative for network television in the 1990s. I cannot stress what kind of a game changer this was in 1990. And and that's that's what I'm trying to do as well is put myself back in the mindset of being in the 90s, right. and what we'd seen on television up until now, and how this just changed everything. I mean, you had, you had like you know quirky shows like Fantasy Island, or you know, but like I said, they were all comedies, right? Or you know, or like you know, advent- mystery type shows like Columbo or what have you, but nothing like this. Adam. Right. They, they all have, I mean, and this has its own comedic, you know, with, you know, with Nadine and the drapery runners and right. things like that, but it's not, 
it, it's not that trope of what we saw in the 70s and 80s where you'd have a mystery show and at the end everybody's sitting around talking about it and it all ends on laughter. Yeah. That I was mean, so many shows ended like I that. I mean, even Moonlighting, which was very innovative because it was that right. it, it was a detective show that broke the fourth wall on a regular basis. But uh, but this, yeah, this is just something completely different. And um, I think obviously influenced a lot of people, a lot of creators ever since, which is Absolutely. why we're probably getting such great television here in the 21st century now. The the TV we have now would, would legit not have happened if right. Twin Peaks hadn't well, we happened. Know, we know like David, Damon, Damon Lindelof, uh, whether you're a fan of his or not um, – he was a big influence on Lost, cre- helped create Lost, mm-hmm. and uh, was obviously influenced by Twin Peaks, as At, were right. many, as were many others, I'm sure. Right, and that's I mean, we 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 wouldn't, we wouldn't have had an X Files, right? Exactly. If it weren't for Twin Peaks, exactly. And if we hadn't had an X Files, we wouldn't have had uh, Fringe, Supernatural, Gotham, right. like anything. Well, because like yeah, because well, Twin Peaks introduced us to David Duchovny. Yes, it did. So yeah, and there, that. Exposure got David Duchovny the lead, I'm sure, on the X-Files. Well, that in, that in the Red Shoe Diaries, but we won't talk about oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, <laughs> well, yes, there's that. Zalman King! <laughs> anyway. But, uh, yeah, yeah, Red, but, but Red yeah, Shoe this... Diaries that had, that had both uh, David Duchovny and Cheryl Lee at one point. <laughs> really? I didn't know that. <laughs> Cheryl Lee was in one of them. I think it was the sixth one. I forget which. Okay. I didn't watch the show, but I know of it. I watched that one okay. um, because of it's just it's like not even it's like it's like that porn that's too funny to be porn. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> they're like this is just takes itself way too seriously. Right, right, right. So yeah, like it actually tries to have a plot. Yeah, what is that? What's up with that? What's up with that? Get your plots out of my porn, people. Seriously, just uh, get. Yeah, yeah, I came here to. Oh wait, take did, your I, shirt did I off, did, did, did I say that out loud? Ugh. Right. Yeah, it's not. You're not saying anything. We're all, none of us are thinking. We're all not just thinking. Right. Don't worry about it. Exactly. We're all thinking it. All right. So uh, next time on Ghostwood, we're going to talk about rest in pain. Get it, R.I.P. Because this is the big Laura Palmer's funeral episode. Oh, poor Laura's funeral. This funeral goes so badly. As I raise my hand up and down. Yeah. Yeah, we got to get the uh, the napkin dispenser from the double R. To yes, the complete. napkin dispenser to, to Shelley, Shelley's death. impression of that is pretty hilarious. It's hilarious, but it's a little insensitive, Shelley. <laughs> I mean, I come on. It, I kind of find I, I find it amusing, but yeah, it is. It's ta- yeah. well, I just I think it's more tasteless than insensitive. It's, yes, it's 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 pretty it's pretty tasteless because I mean, let's admit it is it's right. one of those things that it's so bizarre you don't know whether to laugh or cry. Right. But Shelly, come on now. You're you're better than this. Right. It is it was one of those rare moments where you actually had one of the like a Twin Peaks character recognizing the weirdness of something going on around them. <laughs> yeah. Right? Because you get the feeling that the people in this town are just like They're numb okay. to it. They're numb to it. Yeah, they're just like whatever. <laughs> like whatever's going on. We just regularly have yeah. people just yell out about the pie. Right. I will I will say the the whole hot damn this pie is good. I yes. wanted to do that so bad. Right. But then I mean how many people have done that? Like how I just don't yeah. want to be yet another one of those idiots that goes into the <sighs> goes into the double R and makes, makes how many, an ass yeah. of myself. Yeah, you gotta wonder how many people actually do that. So many. Or you know There's like gotta be, yeah. they start quoting Twin Peaks going like in the double R going, you know, well I've gotta have another piece of this fabulous pie. Two more slices of this wonderful pie. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, yep. and, and I'm and I'm sure they're fine with it because you know what, whatever they're selling pie. Yeah, exactly. They don't and, care. They're just trying to make money off the tourists. Yeah, and they and you know we bought T-shirts, we bought yep. coffee mugs. I mean, it's not like we didn't buy stupid stuff. Right. And you know, I'm a decent tipper. I didn't so. really. I didn't know you had. They had um, T-shirts there. I would have like given you money to buy me a shirt. They had T-shirts there. Yeah. What if, if they have a website? I think they do. Yeah, tweets. Cafe. Okay, I have to check that out because that will uh, that be kind of that be kind of cool. All right, so yeah, we're going to talk about Laura Palmer's Cheese funeral. Cafe. dot com. Oh, look at that. T w e d e s. That's tweeds. Guess what's going on this year's Christmas list? Guess what's happening? Yeah, here's a store. Sweet. And oh, you can buy their pie, but oh, you can't buy their you can buy their pie, but you can't buy their uh, shirts. 
Really? That's, that's weird. really strange. That's really strange. Yeah, because you would think it'd be the opposite. That you would absolutely. Sh- think they, you could not ship food, but interesting. I'll bet you could write him a letter saying, "Hey, send me one of them coffee mugs while you're at it too." Yeah. <gasps> There's a pie eating contest. All right, I'm gonna have to check yeah. this website out. All right. All right, that's awesome. Okay. All righty. So, uh, um, anything else about this episode before we uh, sign off here? No, yeah, like you said, it is the it is what made Twin Peaks what it is, which is then in turn what made the landscape of television what it is today. Yep. So this is a major. This, this one's is, a big deal. Yeah, this is a big deal. So, uh, and I'm glad I got to share it with you, Zan. That's awesome. I got I'm glad I got to share it with you too. I was I was lonely watching Twin Peaks because you know first of all, right. I was kind of late to it. Yeah. So by the time I was like really getting into these early episodes, everybody had sort of been there, done that, and had gone on with it. Right. Not everybody stayed obsessed with it like I did. Well, so it's it's nice hello. to have you for that. Yes. That's why I'm here. All right. That's why we're here. That's why we're here to share our love of Twin Peaks with you guys. That's why we have each other. Exactly, and <laughs> and all of our wonderful listeners. All of you out there in podcast land. Yep. So if- uh, speaking of all of you out there in podcast land, if you want to get a hold of us here at Ghostwood. You can drop us a line at, at ghostwoodcast on the Twitter machine, or you can email us at ghostwoodpodcast at gmail.com. A gmail. At the gmail. But we would definitely love to hear from you because we would like to know uh, what you guys think of these commentary episodes. Are you cool with this? Are you enjoying it? I hope so. And if you have any other like interesting trivia bits, like that being yeah. Ray Wise's own bloody hand, right? Let us know. We want to know that stuff. Yeah, well, yeah. If there's like obscure trivia that you're aware of, that you want to make sure we acknowledge, yeah, please pass that along. Or just like stuff that you really enjoyed. You know what episodes are coming up because we're going sequentially. So, right. so if there's an episode coming up that you know that you you really liked a certain scene or what have you, uh, let us know, and we'll we'll share that. On the podcast. Absolutely. We'll share it with the world. So, yeah, drop us an email. Or, you know, like you can reach us on Facebook, of course, at Ghost with the Twin Peaks Podcast, oddly enough. And we would love to hear from you there as well. Either one, just you, you got a lot, of, you got three sources right there. You could drop us a line. So, no excuses. All right. Exactly. All right. And Zan, where can they find you on the interwebs? I am on the Twitter machine and on the Instagram as Udenax19. What about you, Charles? Nice. Well, of course, I'm on the Twitter machine at Charles Skaggs or on the Instagram at Charles Skaggs. Google Plus for all your crazy kids in the Google Plus. Shout out to Karen. And um, Facebook, of course, at Charles Skaggs. And my blog of geeky things. What's that called? Damn good coffee. And hot. Which is good job, Andy. very timely this episode. Where well, there's no sense, there's no feeling, Andy. <laughs> but uh oh, yeah. so cute. exactly so uh yeah on my blog of geeky things where i talk about all the things we talk about here on ghostwood twin peaks or you know the saturday night live parody or what have you all kinds of comic book sci-fi news uh reviews stuff that just i generally find interesting and uh other than that um you can reach me on my other podcast I do for Southgate Media. Uh, what are they? Oh yes, Charles can't even remember his own. Podcast. I know, I know. It's just, the fandom zone. I was up at three. Th- off I, I was up. And I was Titan talk. Right, exactly. I was up at three thirty yesterday morning, <laughs> and I'm still recovering from this. Um, yes, thank you. So yes, you're welcome. The, the award-winning next stop everywhere, the Doctor Who podcast. That's right. Yeah, because we won award, guys. Awesome, so, man. Which is cool. So that it's, is really cool. It's the ginchiest. So yeah, please check those out, and also please support uh, Southgate Media, the Patreon Patreon page, because yeah, they uh, they help us keep the lights on and uh, help us deliver these lovely commentaries to all of you out there in podcast land. Yes, exactly. All right, so come on back, everybody. Uh, Zan, any final thoughts before we head out? I'm just going to go ahead and shout out to um, Buckeye Donuts here in Columbus, Ohio. Right. Because every time we do this podcast, we do it in the evenings, and I'm really in the mood for donuts. And then you think it's too late for donuts, but not for Buckeye Donuts. It's 24 hours a day. Thank you very much. Yep. Buckeye Donuts, you know, you could sponsor our podcast, and we will totally plug you to high heaven. Totally, yeah. Twin Peaks podcast, that makes perfect sense. And if you know you want to kind of slide some donuts our way, we're cool with that too. Just saying. Oh, 
on a paper towel, we'll take it. Yep, we can be bribed. As, as long as we can stack them in the nice little towers, we're good. There is literally a 90% chance I'm going to go out for donuts here in about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> well, swing on by here. Drop me off some because I'm going yeah, totally I'm to I'm a want some donuts. I know. This stupid show and their donuts are <sighs> hot. Too tempting. Too tempting. So tempting. Yeah. It's, it's, right. it's, it's a bad show to watch if you're on a diet. <laughs> or if you just like me and you haven't eaten all damn day. Well, that too. Probably. That, that probably doesn't help, does it? Doesn't help. All right. No. So everybody come on back for Rest in Pain. Laura Palmer's funeral next time on Ghostwood, and uh, we see you next time right here on Ghostwood, the Twin Peaks podcast. Bye, everybody.